Welcome back to Career Build Series. This is episode 88, and in the last episode, I uh, took out my new self-loading container trailer. Uh, there were some issues with how I built it, so I could only load in one container. Had a very close call with a deer. There are a couple uh, short videos. There's a teaser for the episode 87. There's also a short. If you don't want to watch the whole episode, you can go watch that teaser. I uh, almost rolled over my tractor trailer trying to avoid hitting a goat in the middle of the road. And so I think what we're going to do this episode is we do need to start focusing on trying to get some more money. And so one of the things we'll do is I want to continue testing that self-loading container trailer. And so I think we'll do that first. Uh, thinking of maybe trying to get some oil moving for some money. So that will come. I may or may not do that on screen. I just need to get, the, get some oil moved and sold because there are some... Some of my long-term goals, one of the ways to stay engaged in this game, you know, a lot of people ask how you can play long, it gets boring after a while, and one of the reasons is if you have some short-term goals, what you want to do that particular mission, that particular play session, that's good to have a short-term goal. It's also good to have medium and long, and so my medium and long-term goals are, for example, I want to buy an island that's out by the volcanic ring. And this allows me to build my own base. And so I'd love to do that. We can build our own base and launch some uh, sea vehicles from there. So that's something to do. I also want to get the home ship in. And so that requires a lot of cash. So we're going to need uh, cash. This always keep myself in a place where I need more money. It kind of keeps me, every once in a while, I have to actually go out and do something that is financially viable. I enjoy going out for these rescues that make like two grand. But I need to go out and make some big buku cash. So let's go ahead and we'll start by getting the old uh, road train up and we'll try to move containers successfully this time. So we'll take the road train tractor, which still needs work. Everything always still needs work. And then we'll grab this, uh, the fixed side loader, the self loader here. It is, it is a side loader. It's a self loading side loader. All right, and so we'll line this up. And so I made some adjustments to this. So we'll kind of look at that really quick as I hook it up. So one of the issues I was having is because these rope connections were not equidistant, it was causing the container to favor one side or the other, which was often hitting. So what I've done here is you can use one rope anchor for multiple ropes, and that's the best way because what was happening is the container would tilt because the distance was different. Now having it on the same rope anchor, the distance is the same. It will tilt less. Also, they're now equidistant. So as you can see, they're one block off of the locking lugs. Each one. Uh, is that one one off? Let me check this one. This one is going to need to be fixed. This one's in the way. That one will not work. All right, so I have to fix this one. So good catch. So we'll grab that really quick. So this one needs to be cut and moved in. I will have to fix it on the actual trailer itself here. All right, so that will go like that. As you can see, this is too wide, and so I need to make sure these are one off the lug, and that keeps this equidistant, keeps the container from sliding one way or the other. So that is important. I'm actually going to, let's do this. Oop, I don't want to save it. Let's do this. Let's actually open up the, con the trailer itself, and what I'll do is I'll move it in this one then. I can load it back in. I don't have to try to remember, which inevitably I don't, to reconnect it. So I really love the rope update. I think the devs have been making some really uh, great small updates here. Uh, this should also be connected. Another thing for strength, if you're having strength issues, for example, these were torquing. They were uh, twisting. And so one thing you can do is, if you notice, all these come up at the same time, and that's because I linked them. And now that will keep it from torquing because it's as though they're all one. Now, every time we lift the container, we're actually using three of these pivots and three of these pivots to move the container. So it actually adds an extra pivot, giving us even more strength. All right, so that's a good little trick to do is linking them up. Oh, uh, what am I doing here? Let's load up the road train. That's saved. Rotate train tractor. Eventually, I'll come up with a model number. I just have yet to, to do so. And it's this one. All right, good. So let's load this in. I need to also move it in the correct position so that it will be where the tractor is. That way, I don't have to keep moving it like this. I had it before, but I, uh, I had to move it. So let's spawn this in. Let's load up two actual containers that are going to work. Last time, I made the error of... Grabbing, I believe it was uh, for BBG. I grabbed the wrong container. I didn't really check. 
Uh, it was mostly a test anyway. You know, beginning of the early builds here, you know, a lot of the period is testing, trying to get everything working correctly. So it uh, doesn't bother me too much if I have to reload stuff. I also shrunk the trailer a little bit. This used to be a three gap. It's now a two gap. And the reason is I want this to be a 53 foot trailer. That's uh, max for standard trailers in the U.S. And I had to extend it by a block, so I uh, found a spot where I cut it by a block to uh, make sure it was still within spec. All right, so let's get going. We have an empty trailer, so we'll start in third gear here. The gear here. I also uh, worked on the supports. Another one of the great updates I think the devs did, it's one of my favorite updates, is the hard points. The hard points really change the game for the better. I think a lot of these updates, they kind of get missed and people don't really appreciate them for their, you know, how much they help us with some of our engineering tasks. We used to have to do all of the attachments with connectors and the issue is you cannot spawn two connectors within a block of each other. You have to have a block gap. So everything would then snap together and so you'd have issues with things snapping together. You'd have to make things on sliders. You know, I had doors where I'd have to put something on a slider to get it to lock. Now with hard points, we can start them in a locking position. Uh, these don't start in a locking position, but now as they slide, they'll lock into that hard point. And the way you can make them work sometimes is they won't violently attach, so that's uh, beneficial. So we're actually back here. We have the same containers. I just rolled back the save because we didn't do anything productive last time. And uh, I didn't want to have to drive it back. So let's go ahead and we'll go for a waka waka here. And I'm going to take off the rain. Again, I reloaded from last time. It's just been raining in real life, and it's been raining in-game, and I am sick of it. So, JSI, JSI. I'm actually going to take screenshots of these containers so I don't grab the wrong ones. I will double-check them as well. So, we're looking for either Urine Wind or JSI. We went to Urine Wind last time. Let's just do this. Went to urine win last time. Let's just make an executive decision. I'll just grab these two for JSI. That's 177 minutes. That is 72 minutes. JSI 2, JSI 4. Not a ton of money, but again, I'm not really needing, a, you know, people will talk about the metas, why they always do something. If you really need to make a ton of cash quick, go with the meta. And so when I, when I eventually need money, I will go do a diesel cell run and a jet fuel cell run, and I will pour tons and tons of cash into the bank. But until I do that, I'm going to do things that are fun that might not be the most profit per game hour, but are going to allow me to have the most fun per game hour. And so that's more important to me. And then when I want to go, you know, when, when the house needs cleaning, for example, I'll launch uh, the barge and the tugboat, and that can sit on autopilot. It, it's actually not very far to go sell diesel, but I can launch those, and in a very quick amount of time, I can go get a considerable amount of cash while I'm AFK. So, as you can see, we have new hard points here. This is better than the gripper system. Gripper system was what a lot of us used before. We had hard points. Still, uh, gripper system has efficacy, but, uh, you know, these hard points, I think, are superior. Why are my mangals not on? I think electricity, so I'm going to... Okay, they're good now. And so you just heard that click. That's them locking in the hard points, and that will keep us stable. All right. Nice. So the trailer is now stable. Let's bring the arms over. You know, I could speed these arms up. The reason I don't is that they presently, you know, I, I pretty much am engineering this so that when I have the container on, you want to you wanna engineer for the most critical, you know, uh, the most critical situation. So for this, the most critical situation is when I have to worry about actually moving the container. When you move in a lot of mass, you don't want it moving very fast. You know, force equals mass times acceleration. So the container's mass stays static. And what we're changing is the acceleration. So we're increasing force. And so I don't want to have it swinging. Right, there's a certain level of force in which this trailer will tip over. And I don't want the trailer to tip over, so one of the ways I make sure the trailer doesn't tip over is I limit the force. And I can either limit that by reducing mass, well I can't, the container stays static, or I can limit it by reducing the acceleration. So what I'm going to do is have it go slower. Now one thing I would love the devs to add is in up-down counters, there is a, an interval. 
And interval is one of the ways. So see, I'm pulling it towards me. Beautiful. Now I'm going to go down. So you do this kind of stuff in real life. You know, you uh, utilize the machinery to help you move these things. Instead of moving the, the uh, tractor trailer, I just go ahead and I move. I just drag it where I want it. It would make a terrible screeching noise, but, but that's uh, what I did. So let's go ahead and move that. And we're just going to get it as close as we can. So as you see, that's nice and close. Uh, BB to get it down to 2 meters. So I can attach it to the same position. So I'll grab up this. Theoretically, if I can ever grab it. There we go. Attach it. And I can attach it to the same rope anchor. So you can do multiples on that. That means they're going to be the same distance. I was doing two before, and I think there's a better way. I talked about last episode how they do it in real life. They have a Y chain, and you actually hook it to the bottom two lugs, and then it pulls it there, and it will just swing and kind of sit nicely. Let's see if I can't get another rope. I threw a bunch of these in different places, so it would be easy BB for two meters. Grab this one here. Nice. All right, make sure all the locks are off right now. I don't want the snapping to the wrong thing. So we're going to want to go out and up. So what would be nice is if the devs would add a functionality for up-down counters where you could change that interval with a block. And what that would allow us to do is I could have a fast and a slow mode. And you actually have this in, for example, a lot of hydraulics. I'm just going to move the supports a little bit here. You actually have this in a lot of hydraulics where the you would have uh, high pressure and low pressure sit settings. And so in the high pressure setting, things would be moving faster. So for example, certain implements on a bobcat, you would want high pressure settings. Certain implements on the bobcat, you would want low pressure settings. And so this allows you to this allows you to have things move fast or slow. For example, you know, we used to run the Bobcat, and if you didn't put it on low pressure when the when the backhoe attachment was on there, you know, you tap it a little bit, it would shake violently. But on a bucket, you might want it to have a higher pressure, and it wouldn't matter as much if it would shake. And so it would be kind of nice if we could put in a numerical switch box, and I could click a button, and it would actually flip it from, you know, uh, one set speed on my up down counter to a different one you know that's a thought you know so instead of just talking into the ether what I'll actually do is what I recommend everybody do is I will later go make a feature request on the official bug tracker and uh, you know that way people can support it or they cannot and that's actually how you get things in the game I see quite often people are you know hoping for things in the game they're asking on reddit they're asking on the steam discussions the one place they've told us they they the one and only place they've told us they looked is the official bug tracker. So if you want something, go on the official bug tracker. I recommend you search first because what they do is uh, they clear they will put things in as duplicates. So if you search for the thing that you want, likely somebody has already asked for it, and then you can support theirs. And it's actually a higher likelihood you'll get it in game if something has like 60 stars on it they're going to be much more likely to put that in. So it's actually better as well for you if you want that item to go support somebody's if it's, if it's uh, you know, the actual thread they want. If it's a duplicate, what they'll actually do is they'll stack it, all the duplicates underneath. And you can see, yep, lots of people have asked for this. And you can support that one post, and the likelihood of you getting that is much higher. Let's check the distance. Ah, we're a little bit off here. So what I can do is... I'm going to have to back up, and I'm going to jack it to the left here. Uh, I'm not in reverse. That would help. Put it in reverse. All right, now what I'm going to do is, so this is something you do in track trailer, is parallel park. Parallel parking a tractor trailer is actually not all that, well, for me, it's not all that hard. For some people, it is uh, very, very hard. So let's go ahead and put in reverse, and I'm going to look out my window here. IRL, I'd be leaning out the window, but can't really do it in game. All right, and so I'm going to jackknife the tractor like this a little bit. If I say jacket, that's what I mean is jackknifing. So that's when you, just like a jackknife, you're folding it, and it folds at the tractor. So let's look and see if we're close. That's pretty good right there. It's not perfect. So what I need to do is this. We're going to continue to jack to the left here. All right, and we're going to jack about, try to get 90. Now we're going to stop. We're going to go in reverse. 
And I'm going to look out my window again. I should be able to see a little bit better than I can because I'd be looking out the window, but I can't. So as you can see, the trailer will not go forward and back now. The trailer will sit stationary. We're going to want to go forward a little, and I want to straighten the tractor out just a hair. And that's jack 90 degrees right there. We're going to neutral, and we're good. So this is some of the maneuvering stuff that people might find interesting of what you really have to do to get close to stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that arm to try to drag it forward. I can actually, let's back it up just a hair. All right, so if I just back it up, I'm just going to go in and hit the trailer. So what I actually want to do is I want to go forward, and I want to go to the right. And I want to set this angle here. And I'm going to go back. And so a lot of this geometry. So my wheels are full left. I'm going full left on my wheels. And I'm going to turn like this. And now I'm going to keep the angle. And I'm going to stop. And that should have pushed the trailer back a little bit. And that's pretty close to where I want it. So perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll set it. it takes a lot of years practice to get uh, to get to be able to put the, you know, know where you want your trailer. Know what's going to be effective for where your trailer should be. So they're going to go out. I, I have to make sure these magols don't hit the container. They should be good. I'm starting to get used to the distance. Wait for them to click. There they click. All right, we're locked in. And here we go. And so again, I can use these these two cranes to help drag it. Now I have to go up there and attach some rope. Not the end of the world here. And what I'm just going to do is dump this on the ground here. You know, at first what I was going to do is make it so that these uh, cranes were not interlinked, that the middle one always moved, and then the outside two, I could select them on or off, but... As I showed in the editor there, it's much stronger if I, it's a lot stronger if I just, uh, if I just hook them all together, they're less likely to torque and cause problems if I do that. So that's why I, why they all move. So it's a little bit extra work to pull ropes off, but it uh, gives me a much stronger crane unit and uh, have fewer issues. All right, so I'm going to keep going out and I'm going to do the same thing I did the first time. I'm going to just hook the near side. I'm going to drag it forward because, as you can see, I'm not going to be able to reach that. There's going to be more than two meters, and so I'm not going to be able to hook it. So I will set that to two. And I could set it to one, but then I'd have to reattach. I'd have to detach the ropes and reattach the ropes. I don't want to do that. So keeping them at the two meters, I can do this. BB, and we'll attach this. And so as you can see, we have a different one in the middle here because we want to keep the distance the same distance. You know, it's one block off of that lug. So that's where we want it. All right, so I'm going to go straight up. I don't want this to touch the magols if I can avoid it. And so bringing it up like this, what it will do is it will naturally shift the container towards where it needs to go. You see it move to the right. It was favoring this side, and now it's slid, and you see it's centered. So now it's centered. So the gra gravity is going to always want it to go straight down. It's a pendulum effect. And so we're going to drag it in just a little bit, and now we want to go out and down probably. Okay. I kind of probably shouldn't have pulled it in too much. You really don't want the weight sitting on the trailer like this and it blowing out a tire. But what we'll do is put that right there. And we do not want to get under this. Try to practice some reasonable OSHA precautions. All right, and we've got the rope here. So I didn't need to drag it in that much. I overdid it a little bit. Beautiful. All right, good. So let's go ahead make sure none of those are selected. Make sure it's JSI. We're going to JSI. Make sure this one's a JSI. That's JSI. Okay, good. Beautiful. We're actually, we're actually doing it reasonable this time. All right, so we're going to go straight up. It should sling it underneath the crane again gravity one of the reasons i did this is without uh having any sort of winch is gravity will naturally keep it in between as long as it's equidistant gravity will naturally have it swing over the trailer that's how they do it irl for a good reason is you don't have to try to you know determine the angles and the geometry of it you just do it and it gravity will take care of the rest. And so we're going to go left and down. This is how we actually shrink it a little bit. And we're going to go down. It's going to come back to the left. So just understanding how the crane works. So as we come down, we need to go left 
There we go. We're going to go up a little bit. I'm a little bit off. Okay. And we need to go towards the left. And that should be able to grab. Let's hit it. There we go. And we're grabbed up. Now let's we can leave this attached. This is going to be the first one to come off when we get there. So I'm going to leave both cranes attached. And we're going to lower them down. And I'm going to try to make sure I don't put too much tension on the ropes. We're going to take all the tension off the ropes. And we're ready for travel. So beautiful. Let's get a pick here. Nice, nice, and nice. Beautiful. So let's take a quick screen of grab of that. Beautiful. So this is working really well now. I, the hard points are a big improvement. I love using just rope anchors. That was a huge update for me was, was the ropes. You know, a lot of these updates that... I think people will quickly forget that the devs did a great job on, and they'll kind of fixate sometimes on the things they do wrong. There's, trust me, I have plenty of my own gripes on things they've not done a great job on. But, you know, when they do something right, they deserve their little pat on the head, and so I'm giving it to them on this. The rope update was huge for me. A lot of engineering things that uh, it uh, was really helped with. You know, it really allows us, by having set lengths on those ropes, we can do gravity stuff. I wish they would continue it to cables and hoses. That's something a lot of people have been asking for. It's a very it's a very logical and natural thing to come next. So hopefully they do it. Uh, you know, that's something I think they probably will. I it wouldn't surprise me if that was their plan initially and they just didn't get to it. You know, sometimes people are like, oh that was stupid, they didn't release that. You know, there are a lot of games where the devs just walk away or they move on to the next thing. And these devs have been putting out a an improvement to the game every other week. They've been, you know, doing bug fixes consistently. You know, some of them are announcement weeks. You know, they're coming out with major updates. They're still coming out with DLC. As much as DLC is controversial, again, it keeps the lights on, it keeps the game going. And so, again, they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but they keep going at the game. And I think a lot of these updates really help to improve the playability of it. And there's a big lesson that I wish some people would take is, you know, unfortunately I get into some of the Steam comments, which seems like a lot of the disgruntled people are there. And I need to stop that. But, you know, a lot of people will say, if, if I don't want that thing, nobody could possibly want this. And you need to understand there are plenty of things that aren't for me. Weapons DLC, you see, I rarely play that. But I understand it was a huge thing for the community. A lot of people love it, and I'm happy it's there because, guess what? It makes the game healthier. It makes more people able to play this game, which means that, you know, the game stays alive. And just because something's not for me does not mean it's bad or wrong or, you know, not very good. And not the most popular thing has to be put in game all the time. And it actually wouldn't be a good thing. If we polled every time, guess what? We might only get weapons DLC stuff for the rest of the time in the game if we took what was popular. And I think the devs are doing a good job of they're going to some obscure communities who might like some things that are not super popular and they're and they're doing some good updates for them. You know, we've gotten a bunch of train updates which, you know, the train community was I don't think neglected is the right word, but the train community was not getting a lot of new updates for quite a while there. And then they started getting a lot of new parts. And so I think the devs are doing a pretty good job of you know, not perfect, but a pretty good job of spreading the love around and getting it where it needs to go so that different parts of the community can enjoy the game. And so it's actually all of our game instead of just a small group. You know, you need to understand that a very challenging game where it takes a lot of engineering understanding or watching tutorials or learning to be able to even just play the basics of the game, it has a low... It has a small number of people who will play that game. And if you further restrict it by saying, okay, you can only do this or this or this, it further restricts it and it can't be a profitable enterprise. You know, you're not going to sell enough copies. And so they really need to make it where the person like me who likes to play a career, who tends to really like to make some really complicated uh, engineering stuff, can play and enjoy it. The person who wants to just download a plane off the workshop and go shoot some stuff can do that as well. And so I certainly don't poo-poo anyone else's fun. And even if an update might not be for you, it is for somebody. And, you know, my whole thought is, you know, it's not all about me. And so I'm very happy when other people get to uh, enjoy the game as well. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and chat up for a little bit. I've been uh, kind of ranting in the ear for a bit here, and so we'll time lapse, and we'll look up for goats. If you haven't seen that short, I almost rolled this sucker over yesterday trying to avoid a goat, so I will not hit animals in game. All right, and I'll see you in a little bit. Right, here we come. We're approaching uh, JSI. I just thought I'd come back here. This is a kind of a hairy piece of road. I've actually never been down here. I've teleported to JSI, but this is kind of neat. Uh, this is part of the road where I really have to kind of pay attention. As you can see, we have a big drop off on the right there. It's kind of steep here. This is nice. Having some hills in here, it really, uh, you know, one of the good things with this Industrial Frontier update, one of the reasons I really like it is the roads up at the Sawyer Islands are very kind of British, very, t no, I guess a British, I think they, they based off the Scottish Isles, but the, um, you know, they, they, they made it so it's really narrow, kind of winding roads, really hilly and it's tough. This is a little bit more highway, this is kind of America, American Southwest, and so this is a little bit uh, more friendly for trucks. It's one of the reasons I like to spend some time down here. Let's see, yay, cargo's delivered. So I thought on the way here, we're going to try something. It could be hairy. It could end up in disaster. I doubt it will. But we're going to try it here. We're going to try dumping both containers at once. So we're just going to dump them here somewhere so they're um, out of the way. So that we can grab a couple more to go back. I'm going to go into neutral. All right. And let's go ahead. And I'm going to try to take both of these off at once. This could be a mistake. So we'll go ahead and check it. So what we'll do here is I will start by, it's going to be kind of a pain to try to do it. So try not to teleport, try not to no clip. So we'll see what I can do here. Come on, get up there. Can't even get on my uh, fuel tank here. Let's see, grab the, there we go. Got it. Okay, good. And where's this rope anchor? Why aren't you grabbing there? Okay, good. So what we're going to try to do is dump off both of these at once. It's likely, it's, it's very heavy. It, it will probably do it, but it's going to be a little bit hairy. I have to make sure I don't tip the sucker over. Because it's, uh, you know, you never do this. Well, you could be taking off 53 footers IRL. These are essentially, you know, uh, what are these? Probably like 24s or something. Usually, you know, when you're running halves of 53s, they're a little bit shorter because you have to still account for the bumper length and everything. So if you're running dual trailers, you have to have the bumper lengths, so... Okay, so I'm going to just no clip up on the roof, you know, because I can't climb. I can't, like, grab on to something and climb like I would be able to IRL. So, you know, just do that. Again, just trying to keep the no clipping to a minimum, but I 
you know, have not sworn it off completely. So it was nice the Magals seemed to shut themselves off after a while. It was kind of, I didn't want them glowing all the time, and I have to screw with them to get them to do it right. So let's go, let them lock first. Locked, and then we're just going to go down. All right, good. And now we're going to go ahead, and so we even want to, let's tip it a little bit to the right. That's going to make it even less likely to tip over. So you're essentially making a triangle here, and that's giving it the stability, is it would have to push this way into the ground before it could tip this up and over, so that helps. All right, so we, what we want to do next is I need to go and I need to attach both of these, which I have to look in the middle to see if, ooh. So see, I can actually do it over it, so that's all right. Uh, let's find the center position here. Right there, okay. And I try to find it here. Come on. Ah. Try to jump up on the bumper. I had to make the bumper stanchions too close. I can actually push them out now because I had a control panel that went all the way across that because of all the because of all the uh, winches that I have now. I don't need any winches. So let's go up and over at the same time. I definitely one thing you don't want to do is let the weight shift to the right like I'm currently doing. So I need to quickly get this weight. See how it does not like the weight going on that side. So I really need to shift the weight towards the left here. So let's go up. And once I go up, the gravity will take over and it'll straighten out both containers. But it'll get them swinging, which is uh, dangerous. You get a pendulum effect. And that is, again, force equals mass times acceleration. So as it's, whoa, what is going on there? I didn't attach the side. Urgh. Okay, I didn't attach the side. That is uh, an oversight. Crap. <laughs> How I didn't see that coming, I don't know. All right, so let's go ahead and how the hell do I do this now? This is going to be very interesting. All right, so let's see. Ooh, this is ugly. All right, so we're going to reattach the connector here. And I'm going to try to get this one to sit and behave itself. So we're going to go ba both back and down. Oop, there we go. Okay, that one grabbed. All right, now we can try to get this one off of my cab. Again, good picture time. So that was just all I did there was I forgot to connect the center of the container, the uh, right side. So the center lift never got hooked up via the ropes. So let's go ahead and take another picture over here. I like seeing the mishaps. You know, this is uh, this is why I'm a big guy on procedures. Is procedures IRL are how you prevent the stuff. You have a checklist. You make sure you go through the proper procedures. You know. It's uh, easy to forget that you have two connected there. So let's try to get this one de detached here. It's going to want to fall, so it might not let me. I might have to take some some tension off of it. Let's try to... I'm trying not to no-clip here. So, ah, jump. There we go, dude. Of course, I made this a open-frame trailer, as you can see. That's how they are IRL, these um, chassis trailers. All right, so one is done. Let's get rid of that. We're going to try to get this off here using the cranes. So one idea I have for the next build challenge, it's going to be a land challenge, is to build a mobile crane. I think there are many situations in game that will be cool for and uh, useful. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, man. I left too much tension on that. I should have reduced some tension. So... Too bad the test to see if uh, so IRL. What you do is you watch the swing, it swings out. We go down, and there it keeps it down because it could swing back over the trailer. And so you want to check that. All right, good. Nice. So delivery here went pretty well, minus the uh, mishap there. But that was just me forgetting to connect the center ropes. You know, I didn't really see because the old system it, it all attached to one, and so this one does not work like how it used to, and so. For you guys, you've seen pretty much one one or two versions of this trailer. For me, I've seen a many versions of this trailer where it used to do different things. Oh, come on, man. Grab it. There we go. All right, nice. So that is done. Let's see if we can't get this off of us here. And so I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to try to grip it and pull it off the trailer. So let's see what I can do here. All right, so let's detach this side first. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's try to do one thing at a time. This is how I got in trouble last time, was trying to do too many things at once. So let's go, uh, we want to go in, and 
We're going to straighten these all the way up. And so what we're going to do is the top armature can actually go. There we go. It's pushing it nicely now. See if it just drops the ground. We're home free. Let's actually just do this. See if I can push it off us. That will do it. There we go. Hey! All right, so what I was going to do is sling it between. So I was going to hook this one to the close one, this one here, at a longer distance. And it would sling in between them. And it would start pulling it towards this one because uh, now wouldn't this would this one has too much slack. But what it would do is allow me to push it away with the ropes. But we got it off of us, so that's good. So that is something to put in the old oh crap column and make sure I adjust my procedures. You know, we used to say in aviation that uh, most of the rules were written in blood, and the reason was generally if you saw a rule in there it was often because somebody had unfortunately been hurt or killed because that rule wasn't in place, and so they went and they, you know, reviewed why an accident or an incident happened. Those are actually technical terms in aviation. And so um, they'd review why an accident or an incident happened. They'd go change the laws so that uh, you now had to do something, and it was because of that. You know, it was even cool stuff like in the cockpit where, for example, on the Embraer 145, they had covers on the start-stop uh, selectors for the to turn on and off the turbines because... There were people who were trying to turn off the ignition. You Before you go in a thunderstorm, you turn on the ignitions. Because the uh, in the turbine ignitions are generally off unless you're starting or in inclement weather. And they would accidentally shut off their turbines. And so you'd accidentally shut off one or both of your engines in flight, which is not good. And they luckily got them restarted. So what they did was they put little plastic covers. So when you reached up, you could you'd feel the plastic cover you go oh that's not the igniter and you'd look up and then you'd verify it visually that you were actually reaching for the right thing and so uh it's kind of neat how some of the that human factors and procedures come in that's one of the reasons on like build challenges i go into human factors is you know it's kind of it's a fascinating science of you know trying to figure out the best way for people to interact with machines so it's kind of neat all right, so that wasn't as smooth as I would have liked. Let's go ahead, and we're going to park right here, and we're going to check our trailers first. All right, and we'll set the brakes. All right, let's go ahead and take a looky-loo and find what we want here. So that's spy cakes. Pretty good money for some of these. Urine and freight, that is eight. So we're north. Spy cake. Spy cake says a pretty good money out of here. FJW freight. Where is that? FJW. Huh. I'm not familiar with FJW. Oh, it's uh, FJ. Oh, huh. FJW. Okay, that's FJW. That's where we're going. I've never seen it. There's FJW. So FJW's that one, and what, one of those. That's expired. Okay, so here is, this is an FJW, that's 3K, that is Scrap Oceanic, and we want, that one's 4, okay, so let's grab this green one and then that orange one. This is going to be fun because this is going to require some fancy drive and I get this in there. I'm going to try to do most of it from in the cab. So for, so we want to load the front first, and we can't get the front up to that orange one, so we have to load the green one first. And so the green one is right there. That's not a bad grab. And then we have to back in to grab the orange. So a little bit of fun to get these done. You know, I tend to like the challenge, you know, it, it's something, you know, I get very bored if it's not challenging. That's one reason why I like a manual transmission and I like an airplane that has, I have to do a lot of procedures is, you know, for me, as somebody who's operated some really complicated machinery over my lifetime, I get super duper bored if it's too simple. You know, it's like, I understand the simple crowd who want like one button or you sit in a seat and it just works. I get that. But for me personally, it's just super duper boring. And so I tend to build my craft for more for people who, uh, you know, that I do release tend to be more for people like myself who like a little bit of challenge and like to, uh, you know, put a little bit more, uh, you know, make it a little bit more challenging where you have to actually make some more decisions to operate the vehicle and 
It's one of the reasons I don't like automated stuff. It's like I want to be in control, and you know, after being an equipment operator for so much, I I've seen many times where the automation does not do a great job, and I can do a better job, and I'm aware of the consequences of what happens if something doesn't go right, and so I'd rather ultimately be in control of it. All right, good. So we're going to cozy up next to it. Now we're going to go forward. So we back in, and then we have to always think about how the trailer is going to move. And so that's why, you know, I backed it in a little crooked on purpose because I know the tractor is going to end up crooked, and I need to straighten it out. So now, as you can see, the trailer is crooked. It's off to the right. The tractor will make it worse now. So when I do my pull-up, see, I want the front of this trailer to go towards the container. So I'm going to keep this angle in, and I'm going to go left. Then I need to go right with the tractor to set it up to keep it going towards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go full left on my steering wheel and let it catch up for a second. I'm going to gently start going in first gear. Again, reason why you want a nice low transmission in a truck, part of it is see how slow I can go. I'm going, you know, a mile an hour or less. I'm just, now I'm going less than a mile an hour. This is why you want a very low first speed in a truck is it allows you to make very precise maneuvers with a very heavy craft. Now as we look, trailer's straight. So now I want to go backwards and I'm going to go full left on my steering wheel. So my steering wheel is full left and we're going to start going backwards here in a second when the clutch catches up. There we go. And I'm going to now this is bringing the trail the back wheels away from the container but it's bringing the front of the trailer towards it. Now I'm looking at the distance between the front and the back and the distance between here, and it's even. So now that it's even, I'm going to start going right, and I want to straighten the tractor out so that it is straight with the trailer. You can see it's just gently, very gently, very slowly straightening up the trailer. And now the trailer should be much more straight. Now I need to come to the, uh, to the right side with the tractor a little and try right there to see where we're at. Okay? Again, the depth perception is very hard using these... Uh, cameras. That's one reason why there have been some vehicles they've been putting cameras in instead of mirrors and your depth perception, you have problems with the depth perception. And so even though it's kind of cool to have a um, camera instead of a mirror, it's a little bit more it's a little bit more compact and a little bit more aerodynamic. Your eyes can't adjust fast enough to the different um, ranges so it makes it challenging. Alright, that is pretty good and so the front one's okay because we don't want that support to hit this. So it's actually better we're back a little bit than we are too much forward of that support. We'll touch that mag all against the container and then we're in trouble because we'll try to lift it and it will be adhered to that support leg. So I have tested that out and had a couple times where it's been hooked to the uh, mag all and it eventually lets go, but it's uh, somewhat violent. Let's let it attach uh, and down. All right, and we're going to tilt it a little bit to the right. And the reason I'm doing that again is if it's tilted a little bit to the right, this container is going to already try to pull it down. And so if I purposefully tilt it to the right, it has to lift up all of this weight to go more left. So what that will do is it will pretty much a little bit of this, you see how it's angled a little bit to the right, that will about level it when this uh, container, when I pull up all its weight. All right, so let's go out. One thing I could theoretically, uh, I can't really do that. I was going to say try to find a way to speed this up a little bit, but, you know, it's, it doesn't really take all that long. There are ways where you could hold the button and it goes a little bit faster. So as you see, I need to do a uh, pull towards again. So that's something we're familiar with. All right. Oh, come on, man. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. And let's grab another one. All right, so we're going to just do this one here. Uh, I need to drag this towards. I'm not going to be as aggressive as I was last time dragging it towards. I didn't need it that. I didn't need to pull it as much as I did last time. So we're just going to go a little bit in. I just need to drag this a little bit. So we're going to go up, and that's going to take the weight up of the container so that it's going to come off on that right side. So see how the trailer is now straightened out? It's pretty level. I pre-angled it. Now see, we've taken the weight up on that side. Let's just gently pull and let it slide. So the, the container, just by basic gravity, 
it always wants to go where the where the cable is going to be straight vertical down to the center of the earth and so what I want to do is I don't want to ever put this beyond where I want it so if I want it right here I don't ever want to put this beyond it because it will swing and it will go by it will pendul it will be pendulous so let it swing let it stabilize swing and 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 stabilize and I don't want to go past where I want it right there is where I want it so if we draw a straight line down bingo now you notice this is not going to go back so it's actually going to drop right about there so that's pretty good so let's start going booms down we'll set it down nicely and we'll go out and we'll get ready to grab the exterior one beautiful so that's perfect right there so that could be a problem I don't think it's attached if it has it's not a big deal I just need to tap the support to get it to detach from the container but it will actually um, it will I can pull it apart with the crane just not my preferred method All right, there we go but really thrilled with this rope update it makes a huge difference with a lot of the things that I think we need to do in game so. okay grab please thank you all all right, beautiful. So we're ready for a lift, so I'm going to go out full, up, and I'm going to let it swing. All right, so now, instead of letting it swing out, which is going to try to pull the trailer over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and I'm going to take up all the tension, and I, what I want to do is if I look down the center of the container where the center of gravity is, and I look at the uh, rope attach point, it lines up at the center. This is going to swing less. Now I'm going to go up and it won't swing as much beautiful now let's let it settle for a second all right up and in now the reason why it picks up more with that front one is it's torquing that's way up there this is long and can twist and torque it also doesn't have a support up there so it's trying to twist it off there but we have that tractor the mass of the tractor is helping to keep that stationary all right nice easy job here let's go down And we need to go back up just a hair, just a hair, just a hair. And actually to go taller, I need to go in a little bit. Beautiful. And I have to watch the swing of it. That's awesome. All right, good. So let's uh, energize this to grab, and it should grab on its own. Bingo. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and go down and in. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to start developing some some safety procedures here. So next, I'm going to detach all these ropes. Now, I can leave them attached, uh, you know, when we're traveling. That's fine, but I don't want these attached while I'm going to go to the next container because the likelihood is that I could theoretically forget this front one like I did last time. And uh, we end up where I'm trying to pull the front container off and tip the whole trailer over. So there we go. All right, so I'm going to stow it in where it belongs. There we go. We'll grab this one here. So the nice thing, too, about having them on the same rope anchor is it makes it easier for me to grab them. I can just go to one position, uh, theoretically, and grab them. Ah, uh, it's a little bit of a pain, but yeah, I can't really get to the side of this. So. You know, again, another reason I think custom menu is great is, you know, that was something minor that in real life it would be easy for me just to reach up and detach that. And because of the gamification of it, it's a little bit tough. So instead of getting frustrated by it, all I have to do is just no clip. And that's pretending as though that I actually had a thumb and my thumb could actually, you know, articulate and actually hook things up and, you know, detach things in a reasonable fashion without driving me nuts. You know, jumping like this would be nuts. You just reach up and get it, you know. Let's actually do this. Let's try something here. So, again, coming up with procedures that make my life easier and safer. So, this should help right here. All right, good. There we go. Much easier. So, there we go. That's a new procedure to go by that will make life easier. Beautiful. Much easier. Much, much, much easier. Okay, good. 
Should have just kept that rope on me, but we're all right. So let's go, and I want to lower this trailer down, take the weight, and then I want to release the sports. Beautiful. Yep, the container just spawned. All right, and so we're going to verify where we're going. We're going here. That's an FJ. Let's see. How do I want to get this? So it doesn't matter which one I'm coming in. I think I'm going to come in here, go past, jacket right, straighten it, back it in. So that's one thing you do a lot in tractor trailer is you get out and you look. Uh, often, you know, a lot of us can kind of see it on the way in. So you'll notice often tractor trailer driver, when they're trying to get ready to decide where the trailer is going, they will go ahead. So this is called blindside because I'm, I'm looking at my blindside here and I'm getting close to the wall. So I'm actually going to go forward. So track trailer drivers will come in and they're trying to decide how they're putting their load in there. So they start kind of using, you know, they start doing the geometry in their mind of how they're going to set up. And a big thing with getting to have a smooth back, a smooth putting a trailer on door or parking a trailer is understanding is coming up with a good setup. Your setup is half the battle. And so that's something we'll tell new drivers is how to. You know, uh, if you can get a good setup, you, you've done half the job. You know, a setup is super important to getting it in there. And so how you approach. So, like, watch this. See, I'm coming close to this. Why am I coming close to this trailer? So I want my back wheels as close to the corner of that red trailer as I can. But I don't want to I have to worry about tail swing. You see how much tail is sticking past the wheels? The front of the trailer will go right, this will go left, and so I'll hit it. So what I'm doing is, as I'm turning my wheels, you see, turn my wheels left first. You'll see this a lot in tractor trailer where you turn your wheels first. Now, I'm going to come close, and I'm going to hug these as tight as possible. Now I'm going to straighten out. Now I'm going to go to the right because I want to make sure I account for that tail swing. Now what I'm going to do is, once my tail is clear, watch this, I'm going to go past the Uno trailer, straight. So see how close that tail got? That's why I brought the tractor close, was to get that tail as close as I could. I'm going to go past the Uno, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to set my angle in there. And I'm going to, I can't really, I don't have my backup alarm on, so I'm just going to double check them in reverse. I'm going to go wheels full to the right, and I'm going to start backing up gently. Now I'm going to stop and straighten. So see how close I am? Now, I, I have pretty good depth perception with that. I can tell. And the way to do that is you look right here at the closest point of contact. And you look at the angle of, that the closest point of contact there. And that's how you tell your distance. So I know I'm a little bit, but I'm close. So now I want to go straight back. All right, And I want to make sure that this corner here clears this. So when this corner is there, it's cleared it. And so we're just going to gently go back. All right, now I'm going to turn really hard. And so I have a visual picture in my head of where my trailer is. This seems scary to a lot of people who aren't used to backing trailers, but I can do this without looking because I know what the picture should look like. See, that's not going to hit it. Because my setup was good, I knew that that trailer was not going to hit anything when I did that blind back that I didn't even bother looking in my mirror. So what do I want to do next? I want to go full left on my wheels. And what I want to do is this. I want to get this trailer backed in next to the red one, or the tractor. And I want to, so what I'm actually acting in this way is I'm pretending that there's no trailer back there. I need to get the tractor set up where I want it, and then the trailer will follow me. So what I want to do is back up. And so I'm trying to jack this at 90, and I'm going to go straight back. Now, I don't want to jack past 90 degrees. So when I get to out there, I'm going to stop. You'll see this a lot in tractor trailer where the driver will stop. And the reason is you're wasting space if you're trying to turn your wheel while you're moving. So now I'm going to unwind. So I'm going to go full right on my wheel. What this is going to allow me to do is go further in behind that pink container. I'm going to back up till we almost hit the container. And we've bumped containers plenty of times. They're made out of steel. It doesn't matter if you bump them anyway. Bingo. All right, now what am I going to do? I want to go further towards the pink container because see where my wheels are? I'm afraid of my wheels hitting that orange, that uh, yellow container. So now I'm going to go full left in the tractor. Now, again, all I really care about is where the tractor is. The trailer will follow the tractor. So if I go further towards the pink, that's going to drag the wheels of the trailer closer in so that I don't hit that yellow. So we're going to go 
like this. Up, oh, up, oh, I'm in reverse. There we go. I won't say or not if we do push things sometimes to get them to give us more space, but we do. All right, now I want to go to the right side of that pink. Now, if I need to bring my wheels and watch this, I can show you how I bring my wheels close. Watch the wheels of the trailer. Now we're going to turn and I'm going to go to the pink again. Notice how the wheels are coming closer and closer to that clam oil. I'm moving towards the tractor. We're going to keep gently tapping the accelerator and I'm going to get up towards this pink brakes. Now I'm going to go hard left and I'm going to go 90 degrees again. Back into reverse. Now notice the, the, the wheels are really not going forward and back. All I'm doing is pivoting off my tires. So the tires are my pivot point. So I'm going to go 90 on the tractor and I'm going to unwind. So I stop, straighten the wheel out. Now I want to go straight back. I actually want to go a little bit left. So we're going to go a little bit left and I'm going to go back it up. Now what I'm trying to do is keep dragging those wheels closer and closer and closer to the pink. And I'm pressing the wrong button. I'm pressing my brakes instead of my accelerator. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to set the angle with my tractor. And then I'm going to straighten it out. Bingo, stop. All right, so what? I, so the only reason I've done this is I've, I've given myself some more space for those wheels. Those wheels came maybe, I don't know, two, three feet, maybe a meter towards this red container. That's all I was trying to do. Now I want to go full hard left. We want to go as far left as we can, and then we want to cut to the right side of the pink. So there we go. We've gone far left as we can. Now we're ready to cut to the right side of the pink. And all of this is in service of trying to get those back tires around the yellow container without hitting the yellow container. Notice how I'm close to this pink. I'm going to hug the pink. Giggity. And I'm going to follow the pink trail. And now if I've done my job right, I'm not going to hit the yellow. Now it looks like it's too close. That's fine. We can fix this. So I didn't quite pull to the pink trailer as much as I needed to. So we're going to follow the pink. We can't dig into the pink at all here. Giggity. And we're just going to go like this. Now I'm going to watch the back wheels of my trailer. Of my tractor, rather. See how I'm aiming at the orange container? This is how I'm going to drag these wheels. So let me show you. We'll do a get. We'll do a. We'll get out. So this is actually something you have to do in your test. You get a certain number of times you can get out of the cab, and the reason is you visualize what's going on, what I want. So I'll tell you guys what I want. See these wheels? I keep getting them closer and closer and closer. And the reason is, this is called off tracking. The tractor is going to be up here. The trailer off tracks. It's off of the track of the. Of the tractor. The tractor's track is up here next to the pink container. The trailer is off tracking and it's to the right. And so that's why they say, you know, um, this tractor makes wide right turns and you see it and people go in and get crushed. All right. So I'm afraid of that wheel hitting this corner. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I have this tractor. It's going to back up to the corner of this orange like this. Then I'm going to go forward like this. What that's going to do is drag these wheels further in this direction. And then I'm going to probably back one more time, and I'm going to turn, and I'm going to hug that pink again. What I've done is if I move these tractor, these uh, tires more and more to the right, it makes it so that I can get around this corner. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. And this is what I used to do all day is, you know, you have tight areas and you need to do that. So let's go in reverse. Another reason why your reverse should be a very, why you want a slow reverse is, as you can see, I can take the time to set up my maneuvers here. Um, what am I doing here? There we go. Okay, it's just taking a second. So I'm going to the orange and stop. All right, a little bit of bumper cars here. All right, so what are we actually going to do is let's do this. We can actually make this happen a little bit faster. Watch this. This is probably what I should have done from the start. Let's come in. And so now that I've visualized what I'm trying to accomplish, we'll do this. Bingo, stop. All right. Now, theoretically, I could put this in next to the orange, and we'd be good to go. But the likelihood is I don't have that space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go full right, hard right, and we're going to go forward a little bit. Stop. Is actually uh, the collision of that light is uh, like a foot off of it. All right, so let's see. Let's go like this. Let's go forward. So I'm just working the angles on this. On this. Oh crap! Crap! I'm not paying attention. I'm looking at. 
the trailer instead of what my wheels are doing. The thing with in real life is the wheels are sticky. So where you leave the steering wheel, it stays. In this, it keeps straightening out. So we could theoretically try to get it next to the orange. Let's try to see if we can get it next to the orange. That's another plan. So what I initially was going to do was this. See the clam oil? What I do is once I get the tire, so depending upon how hard you're turning this trailer, it changes the pivot point. You're either pivoting off of this tire or you're pivoting off of this tire. The more angle I give it, I pivot off of this tire. The less angle I give it, I pivot off of this tire because at a small angle like I'm at right now, the tractor is trying to pull this wheel first because we're going forward. As I back up, when I do a very hard angle, the tractor is trying to push this tire away, so we pivot off of this wheel. And so what I'd do is I'd back this wheel up till it was right here sitting. Like, I can do this in real life where it's like an inch off the corner. And then you would jack it. You know that just by physics and geometry, that tire can't get any closer to this. And we'd back right in here. And then I would go forward into here and then back up. We're going to try to do it in one where I put the tire here and back in next to the orange and snag it. So I'm going to I'm changing my process. This happens all the time where you decide, nope, you know what, there's a better way to do this. Let's do it a different way. So my wheel is full right. And we're going to go forward a little bit. And so what I want to do is I want to line it up so that tire gets very close to the orange container that I'm looking to pick up. And I'm going to shut my door. I'm going to do some of this with the mirror. All right, and so see the orange? You can probably barely see it in the mirror, but there it is. And so I want to start coming towards this with the uh, with the orange trailer, with that orange container. So I want that back wheel of the orange container, of the trailer, close to that orange container. So I'm doing it all with the mirror. This is how I'd have to do it in real life, but I could also look out the window. So me going to third person is like me looking out the window. So I'll actually do this. This is how I would see it in real life as I'd look out the window. All right, so see that back tire? Again, I want that back tire close to the container. So you notice I've already started angling my wheels. I want to go straight with the tractor. The angle is set that I want. What I need to do is get the tractor straightened out now. Beautiful. Tractor straight, straight, good, good, good. That near tire is where it went. Now notice my wheels are full cocked already. And I'm going to start moving it. There we go. And we're going to angle, angle, angle. We have to worry about the clam oil behind us. Now, at this point right now, bingo, it'll stop us. Again, a lot of people might be interested in the geometry. Some people may be bored to tears by this, but it is my one of my areas of expertise, so we're going to talk about it. So notice, this wheel cannot get any closer to this trailer unless we pull forward. We're now at pretty much our critical angle here. Where See where, how we're angled? We do not have to worry about hitting this clam oil anymore, and the reason is this. We have to worry about our pivot point. So right now, our pivot point is right here. All right, And that's because of the way I'm turning it. And what's going to happen is it's going to pivot off of, it's going to drag this tire. So it actually, the pivot point is probably right about here. And so what's going to happen is it's going to pivot off here like I locked it into the ground. This part of the trailer is going to go away to the right. This part of the trailer is going to come away to the left. We do not have to worry about hitting this clam oil anymore. All right, the angle, the geometry is all set up here. I'm going to go straight back, and in-game we might have some tire slide, but in real life you would never hit it. And so what we're going to do is we have the angle set, and I'm going to start backing it up. Now notice the trailer. See how it's going? It's turning in. Now we're going to start following with the tractor. And we do have to worry about the back wall, but I'm not too worried about it. As you can see, beautiful. That's coming in there nicely. Beautiful. So... What we're going to do now is I'm going to go full right. Now, I want to move my wheel before I even start moving. And that gets me set up for the maneuver. It reduces the amount of space this takes because this vehicle can be, you know, 70, 75 feet long. And so it's going to take a lot of space. So we stop again. We readjust our tires. We're going to back up. And so now what I'm trying to do is get this trailer and the tractor straight. And so now, in order to straighten this tractor out, right, I want the front of the trailer left. So notice how I left an angle in the tractor. So all I have to do now is pull straight up. Beautiful. All right. And I'm actually going to pull up extra. And the reason is I want to get the whole trailer a little bit closer to the orange. And so we pull to the left. We pull to the right. All that right pull does is straighten us out. 
We straighten the tractor and trailer. Now notice the distance is, is good. We can shut the door and we're going to go backwards. So, All right, now I'm looking at the orange trailer. I'm not looking close to me. I'm looking at the orange. And I want to watch my wheels. I focus on the wheels. Okay, I want my wheels to go further right, so I go left with my steering wheel. This comes just as second nature to me. I don't have to try to remember which way to do it. It just does it. And we're going to let momentum take us. I'm not going to keep... I'll tap the accelerator a little bit, but most of it's just going to be momentum. And let's see the distance. Uh, we're probably too. Cl we're probably still need to come back more. I can see my wheels. They're probably about just after the front of the container. Let's stop and check it. Pretty close, so we still need to come back a little bit. So, so much of this, like I said, is set up. If you kind of... Take a look. Sometimes you, you want to get out of the cab and actually look at it visually. You can visualize the geometry of how you want to do this. We're a little crooked, not a big deal. All I have to do is go forward a little bit to the right. And then we'll straighten out again, and that should take that bend out of the trailer. All right, one more back, and we should be there. So you spend a ton of time backing up tractor trailer to be able to get things where you want them. And your setup is huge. If your setup isn't correct, you're going to be... It's going to take you twice as long. You know, it seems like that took a long time, but it would have taken a lot longer if I just tried some things. You know, so kind of visualizing what I wanted first helps a lot. All right, so let's go out. So that has 17 minutes remaining, so we're going to have to book it, which isn't a big deal. But, you know, I've had a lot of complicated backs where it's really tight areas. You know, they have... They have some of the buildings in the cities, and so things can be really super tight. And one thing you get really good at as a tractor trailer driver is ignoring the general public. And so, for example, if you need the space, you know, you take it, you know, you drive, I would say aggressively, but you drive with purpose. You make sure that you take the space you need because the cars will get annoyed that you're taking up the road or whatever to back into, say, some a, a busy area. But... You know, you just need to ignore them. And, um, you know, one of you is the professional and one of you is not. And so it's like, just take the space. They're terrified. They're always afraid you don't see them. So they will get out of your way because they're terrified. Oh, my God, he can't see me. Because, again, they're not professional drivers. They don't know where their vehicle is at all times. And so they kind of just back up and they'll uh, get the hell out of the way because they're afraid you don't see them. Like, we'd do things like we'd wiggle the trailer a little at them because... You know, they were where we, you know, we needed to get over. We've had our blinker on for the last mile. They haven't, uh, all they've been doing is sitting in our blind spot. And you wiggle the trailer a little and they say, oh, no, he doesn't see me. Well, I, I see you. I'm just trying to tell you, get out of the way. You know, I need that space. You're not giving it to me. You know, I've had my blinker on for the last mile. And every time I slow down, you slow down. Every time I speed up, you speed up. It's annoying. So now I'm going to wiggle the trailer at you. And guess what? They uh, get the hell out of the way because they're afraid. You don't see them because, oh, my God, they could never operate a vehicle like that so all right so let's get this right there okay right, good we're hooked we're ready to set this up it shouldn't take me 17 minutes to get back but i do need a i do need to hoof it here a lot of that uh, extra talk in there it was fun i enjoyed enjoyed it but it uh, ate up some of our delivery time here so need to get moving now so we don't need to get them off the uh off the back of us in that amount of time we just need to get to fj and it's better to not wreck, so I, if uh, if we're going to expire in time, I'd rather we expire in time than we get in a crash. So I want to get that centered up so that it doesn't swing on me. It's centered. Now we can start going in and up. And I don't want it to hit me, which I let it do, because I'm a little bit of a rush now trying to make sure we don't run out of time. You know, you very easily start denting your, your uh, chassis, which often the... Uh, Rail company owned our chassis, so we didn't really care, but we ended up fixing most of their chassis anyway. All right, beautiful. Let's get this connected. Bing. Come on, come on, come on. I'm in a big rush now, dude. There we go. There we go. And let's go down and secure it. The back one's coming off first, so we're going to keep all the ropes attached. Beautiful. In and up. Beautiful. Let's get out of here, man. we got to run. All right, I'm going to do the old precautionary save. All right, so I hope you guys found that interesting, but 
it's it's all geometry and you have to understand how the machine works yet you, you know you get things like the tires drag so you have to worry about how much the tire is going to drag this is going to be a little bit of a pain to get out so i don't want to go there see where that orange is i can't get around that orange very easily so i'm going to hug this left corner i'm trying to get my you know what i have enough space up there so let's we can hammer a little bit i'm going to go around this blue so so much attractive trailer is you have to find the spaces that work for you and so i'm going to go all the way up here i'm going to start to turn i might hit that edge there that's fine i'm going to power over it and now i'm watching you want to always watch your corner so notice me watching my corner that's to make sure my wheels aren't going to touch and it's not and we're good so you always want to look out that side window to try to find your corner where your off track is so let's go Go ahead and get going. I hope you guys found that interesting. You know, that's something where I was, uh, you know, I always took a lot of pride in, um, you know, uh, putting trailers in difficult positions. You know, there were a couple really difficult doors we used to have on the building where they would call me in to come put something on door because a bunch of the guys, you know, they were afraid of hitting something. And I used to love to put it on those doors because I like the challenge. You know, I went from flying commercial jets to flying tractor trailer and so you know they're both very challenging i would say you know aviation's a little bit more challenging but um you know so i i always like the challenge so you know if uh, i would often put things in you know if some people are like no i don't want to put it in there you know ask somebody else and i'd be like i'll put it in there you know i'd, I'd be like hey if i bump something you're not going to give me a bunch of crap are you and they're like no I'm like, okay, once I've been cleared by you that if I bump something, I'm not going to hear about it, you know, and they were usually pretty good. Like, if you bumped or scraped a trailer, you know, that was something that, that the they designed, the plant engineers designed the spaces to be a certain distance apart from each other. And so as long as you didn't really break anything or hurt anybody, you could bump a trailer, and you'd actually do it on purpose sometimes. you bump it, and you know it's there, and you know where you are. So you'd bump it with the back of your trailer, and if it was really tight, you knew that if you bumped it, that was as much space as you're ever going to get. So, you know, you see this a lot with people who can't drive their cars for crap is they'll go to uh, back out of a parking space and they should be able to make it out in one. But they're afraid of hitting their trunk on the car behind them. So they stop where they think is uh, they're close and they're actually like six feet away from it. And so, uh, you know professional drivers you don't have that luxury you have to be within like literally we would operate within inches i could back a 53 foot trailer using just my mirror there's no camera in the back and i could get it within a couple inches of another trailer without hitting it and that's just practice and you do it enough times you start getting really good at it all right let's uh try to get back within the 17 minutes it's it's not a huge amount of money for that container if i don't get it but we should be able to do it these distances are pretty short it looks like we're actually going not too fast but we're probably doing at least 50, 60. We're doing 60 miles an hour. So this looks f pretty slow because we don't have references. This road here is, this is about a two-lane highway right here. It doesn't look like it, but that's a two-lane highway. I should be able to easily operate just on this right side like this. But, um, you know, so you don't get a good perception of speed in game. So, you know, you go 137 miles an hour, it doesn't look like you're going very fast at all. So... Go ahead and we'll time lapse this out. You guys probably have heard enough of me for a little bit, and I'll see you when we get there.
Okay, so we made it in time. We got both uh, containers delivered, so there's 7K. I'm just going to put them up here next to the tracks. We're going to unload both of them this time. I'm going to hook up I need to hook up four ropes. So Nice little drive back. You know, we're hitting 70 miles an hour, or, uh, you know, between 60 and 70 the whole way back, so make good time. All right, and so we're going to want to hook up these fronts here first. And it's a little bit challenging. I'm going to just no clip on top because a little bit challenging to jump. And it's just me jumping like an idiot. It doesn't add any real benefit or realism to the game. It just makes it a little bit uh, more obnoxious. So no clipping would be just like me climbing up and actually having an opposable thumb that I can do things with. So let's go hook that up. And we want to hook up the middle as well, which we forgot last time, which causes problems. Uh, where am I? Am I running? Am I out of ropes? Nope, there's two back here. I didn't use them in the appropriate order. All right, and so we're going to test out unloading two. You know, this would be like unloading a full 53-foot container. You know, so it's not necessarily all that unrealistic. You'd be unloading one 53. That's what these are often will uh, do. So just kind of, these are halves, so... Bingo. Okay, we're hooked up. Let's do a test here. We'll try to drop this sucker off. I'm going to do a save here. Oh, actually, try to save one more time. There we go. Bingo. And let's uh, set out our stabilizers. And especially on this one, I'm going to pre-angle it to the right. And make sure that we have a little bit of angle in there. So as I come over the top, it is already ready. Because this will make it even harder for this to try to tip the trailer over. All right, so next thing we want to do is we want to disconnect you. And I need to make sure they don't favor that other side. So they're trying to slide away already. I need to counteract that. I should have put some pre-pressure on them, but we're all right. I think, see, I can get in there pretty quickly. So I want to keep, so in order not to tip the trailer over, I want to keep that rope further to the left of center. So wherever the center is of the trailer, I need to stay to the left of it. All right, doesn't necessarily like it too much. You see it's going to swing. Let's go down, down, down. Bingo. So I wasn't a big fan of that. So probably won't be doing that in the future. But as you can see, it did not like lifting two. Two is a little bit excessive for it. It, uh, it wants to roll at that point. But not the end of the world. We're not in any trouble here. We just need to go down on that. The weight now is held by the ground and not by the trailer. And this can go... Up, and this needs to go down at the same rate. And as you can see, we'll set the uh, tractor and trailer back on the ground. All right, good. Let's detach these. So that was fun. Would I want to go in as the trailer's tilting? No, I would not want to go under there. But, um, yeah, so probably unloading two at once is ill-advised. Uh, so we'd load, you know, unload one at a time. Not a big deal. But it was kind of fun to try it. Always nice to see what it could do. You know, I theoretically could put magals on the other side, but the goal is, again, for me, a lot of times I like to do it realistically. I like a challenge, and so I don't want to put magals on the other side. We just unload it one at a time, like one would, you know. You know, and I probably could have done it if I kept it closer. I let it lean out a little bit too far, and so probably if I kept it a little bit closer, it would have been fine. Uh, this one. Come on, dude. There we go. Stall these up. So that was fun. I enjoyed it. I, I like, you know, I've always enjoyed the actual mechanics of how machines operate. You know, either the internal mechanics or the physical mechanics on how you articulate a machine. And so, you know, thinking up these problems, I always like, you know, like I said, it's, it's more fun to me to have a challenging back where I have to do some tricky maneuvers to get in there. You'll you'll often hear people be like, "Oh, that was that was a good job on that one." You know, the, when something's challenging, people will uh, you know are quite are impressed by it. When it's easy peasy, it's not. And that's again why I really don't like automation. Is if something is doing it for you, what where's the sense of pride in that? There is no sense of pride when something automatically does it for you. It's like you didn't do it. You watched it. You were a passenger. You know, it's it's like that person who might get satisfaction by watching somebody else back a trailer in a tough alley in the city. You know, 
But you as the driver get the satisfaction of that was a tough alley and I got it in there on the first shot. And it gives you a sense of accomplishment. And that's why I prefer a less automated approach where I prefer a approach where I actually have to be the operator and where I'm in charge of actually making it work. And so, uh, you know, if you're a little bored with the game, I suggest that. Do some more stuff yourself. You know, automation is really the king of boredom. You know, I, and so hope you guys enjoyed that. I think we'll end up there. That was fun. We didn't make a we didn't make an extreme amount of money. We don't have to. You know, I enjoyed this a lot. I say I would probably enjoy this a lot more than if I had just gone and you know, put the tugboat and the barge on autopilot and let it go over there and then what AFK, well, it was unloading fuel and yay, it gave me 150 grand. Yay. I had more fun delivering those containers for probably like sub 20 grand than I would have if I had uh just, you know, ran the barge. So, you know, big part of this is uh, having fun. And if you're having fun, you're doing good. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.